I'd like to tell you a story or two in the life of J.J. Rouse. His autobiography is called Pioneer Work in Canada. Here's a picture of the old book. He was a remarkable fellow. He's one of my heroes. He was born in um, Canada, in Simcoe County, Ontario, on May 15th in 1869 on a farm there and uh, was saved in his youth and in a, a remarkable way God used him in pioneer evangelism and as I thought of him I thought of the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 where he describes some of his uh, daily experiences so when you feel like you've had a hard day Maybe you could go back and just read this a bit and remind yourself. He writes, among other things, uh, this is verse 26 of 2 Corinthians 11, In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which comes upon me daily, the care of all the churches. And when you read this book, it's just remarkable. I mean, he walked thousands of miles. He lived, uh, as they say, from hand to mouth, from, from God's hand to his mouth. And many a time, he was right down to his last nickel. He worked in northern Ontario first, and then went across to um, Alberta, Manitoba and Alberta, eventually British Columbia. Saw many uh, believers saved, many people gathered together uh, as New Testament churches across the countryside. And uh, quite a remarkable story. You'd enjoy I saw this book is available on ABE Books and others. And uh, those of you who enjoy reading a good biography, um, autobiography, this is it. He has a sense of humor and uh, tells some interesting stories on himself. And, and this is one of them. Uh, we sometimes think, well, these preachers, you know, they're big and strong and, and bold. And um, they, you know, they, they don't need any encouragement. But many a time, God's dear people do go through a very difficult stretches and they need encouragement. And this is just such a one here in this book. This is uh, page 53. It was during this time I was severely tested. The people were very poor where we boarded and I had promised them my board, but for five weeks I was without even so much as a cent in my pocket. On the Saturday, while I was walking to Huntsville, I'm not sure how many miles that was, but it's quite a long journey, I was terribly discouraged. And such thoughts as, here you are, look at you. If you had gone on to be a congregational minister, you would not be caught in a fix like this. I confess, I was like the children of Israel who were sorry they had left Egypt. It was my custom when I went to Huntsville to preach on the street every Saturday night. But this Saturday night, I walked up and down the street for an hour, feeling about as sad and gloomy as I ever did in my life, when the thought struck me. If you went into Huntsville Post Office, which at that time was kept open late on Saturday night for the benefit of the country people, you might get some mail. It was from Huntsville. The mail was dispatched for Emberton every Thursday. Emberton was the little place where he was presently living and preaching. Just one mail a week, and anyone from Emberson could get Emberson mail if they happened to be in Huntsville. I went to the post office and asked for mail and got a letter with $5 in it. I confess the $5 looked to me like $500, and the Indian's hymn came to my mind. It was a splendid accompaniment. There are three verses to the hymn, 
the first verse of which is, go on, 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 go on. He says there are two other verses and the words are the same. <laughs> you know, many a time uh, we, we go through these difficult times. We need to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. Somebody somewhere felt led to send a, a little letter with five dollars that got there just at time for God to use it to encourage his heart. goes on to say how as he left the post office he began to sing a hymn. Should the death angel knock at your chamber in the still watch of tonight, say would your spirit pass into darkness or on to the land of light? And he said it was very moving because as he came out singing, there was an undertaker who was taking a coffin out of some poor fellow who was on, on his way to the grave. And uh, he said people noticed right away and uh, he began preaching and God used it in the salvation of precious souls. Well, let me read another little incident here. He says, in Kenora the farthest west place in Ontario and close to the prairies, there were a few Christians who met in a private home to remember the Lord, but there had never been any aggressive gospel testimony. I went there during January and February when the weather was extremely cold. Yeah, we're talking like 40 below zero. And snow was deep, and I conducted meetings in an empty store building rented for that purpose and a number of people were saved. I saw the Lord working in a very marked way, and there were a number of very bright cases of conversion. Living in the country a few miles out of town was a family. The father and mother were Christians, and the eldest daughter was in deep soul trouble. I walked four miles one cold afternoon to their home, and there occurred that day a scene I shall never forget. I sat for two hours beside this young woman with my Bible, turning to scriptures and having her read many of them, hoping God by his Spirit would reveal Christ to her soul. I never did believe in talking to people and reasoning them into a profession, as is often done. After the two hours thus engaged, she was still in darkness, and the great question with her was, what must I do to be saved? And the tears were flowing down her face. Then we were called for supper. But she declined to sit down at the table with us and took her Bible and a tract I had given her and went upstairs to be alone. We had just given thanks for the food and coupled with it the prayer that God would save this young woman. When we heard her coming down the stairs at great speed, she told us afterwards that she missed the first step on the stairs and nearly fell headlong. As soon as she had gone upstairs, she began to read the tract, and on the front page was quoted John 1, 29. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. As she read, with the eyes of her heart, she got a look at Jesus on the cross, bearing her sins and dying for her. This is real conversion. Christ revealed to the soul by the Spirit of God through the Word of God. As soon as she entered the room where she could see her father who was sitting at the head of the table, she put up her hands and shouted, Oh, Dad, I see it all now. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He bore my sins and his own body on the tree. Her father met her in the arch between the two rooms, and there they stood, with their arms around each other, weeping and rejoicing together. Such a scene I have seldom witnessed. It was too much for me. I had to get behind the door. I was so overcome. Soon she said, let's sing. Settled forever sin's tremendous claim. Glory to Jesus. Blessed be his name. She, her father and mother, and I sang all the hymn through together, and I'm sure there was rejoicing in heaven also 
and the effect on the large family was very evident. They were all off their chairs, standing with their backs to the wall, awe-stricken, and some were saved afterwards. We read in Psalm 40, verse 3, Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. At this time, we had a demonstration of this very thing. What a wonderful thing. All those miles, all that cold, all the poverty, all of the challenges. And he talks about uh, the farmers sowing salt in the the grass around his gospel tent and then sending their cows to trample around and, and drive their horns into the tent uh, with, with bells ringing all through the meeting, trying to get to that salt, licking the salt, and all the different things they tried to do to stop him. But his theme song was, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. May God help us to be the same kind of people, to go on until we hear the shout and see his face. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. <laughs>